Hey guys, Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale with another top player spotlight. You guys really enjoyed the last one we did with Zed. Today we're going to bring you Bright Light. Now, if you've taken a look at the top leaderboard, oh, anytime in the last six months or so, you probably saw Bright Light's name there. He's been number one in the world multiple, multiple times. This is one of the two decks we're going to review in today's episode. I had a chance to sit down, have a chat with him. Here's some screenshots by the way right now he's fifth in the world but here's some screenshots of him number one in the world just so you have that proof of purchase so to speak and what we're gonna do is go over these decks he was kind enough to share a bunch of his replays and he was also kind enough to share a bunch of his tips for these decks you guys know I like to ask a lot of the same questions to these top players in the game and bright light was super generous with his time giving me a very full in-depth review of these decks really sharing a bunch of basics in advance tips for both of the decks we're going to be reviewing today. Some of the things we're going to be discussing are the overall summary of the deck. What is this deck trying to accomplish both offensively and defensively? We'll talk about the ideal combinations of cards to use in both of those scenarios. And of course, we'll talk about the biggest mistakes he sees other people using when using the same deck or a similar deck. So I think that's one of the most valuable things that we'll discuss in today's episode. So before we get into all those advanced strategy tips from Bright Light himself, let's just review the deck and talk about the cards and some possible substitutions before we get too far ahead of ourselves. So one of the first things that caught my eye when I saw that this was his go-to ladder deck is that the deck is so basic that anybody can use it, really for any Arena 6 and beyond. Of course, the Elixir Collector is unlocked Arena 6, and after that, you have all the cards you need to actually run this deck and have success with it. So you only actually have four troops in this deck. You have the Hog, the Barbarians, the Archers, and the Knights. The rest are either Spells or the Elixir Pump or the Cannon. The two spells being Freeze and Poison. So no Zap in this deck. So those of you who are used to running Zap in pretty much all your decks, you do have to adjust a little bit. Of course, you do have Freeze on the other hand here. So your Cannon, obviously, you guys know what a Cannon does. It's your defensive distracting unit. It buys you some time. It distracts tanks. Very important card in the deck. I mean, these are all very basic tips. I won't spend too much time going over them. Obviously, you guys know if you're running an elixir pump in your deck, you have to use it. Don't be super aggressive offensively during the wrong times. Make sure you pump up in between these little defensive or offensive spurts. So anyway, going on to the actual tips, because that's what you guys are really here for. Let's kind of get right into it here. And let's start with the best offensive combinations in this deck. So what you're trying to do here is combo the knight and the Hog Rider. Now, if you're a player who usually plays Trifecta or a Hog Cycle deck like myself, that might sound a little bit weird. I mean, the Knight is a slow-moving tank and a Hog Rider is a fast-moving offensive proxy card. So why do you combo them together in this deck? And it's all basically because of the Freeze spell. Bright Light told me that his number one offensive combination is getting a Knight in the lane and then getting a Hog behind him. And then what you want to do is wait to see what the opponent counters with and drop your freeze only in one circumstance. You want to wait for the perfect time. The perfect time is you need to make sure if you use your freeze spell that you're getting a positive elixir trade from that exchange. So in other words, if they're countering your knight and your hog with just goblins or just a tower, don't use your freeze spell. If they're countering your hog and your knight with uh, the, the barbarians that you saw on the map right there in that replay that just ended, then you can use your freeze spell because what's going to happen is your knight is going to kill all the troops that were frozen unless he's already at the tower in which case that's okay too because then you'll have a hog and the knight on the tower but what you want to do is always make sure you're getting a good end of the deal in terms of those elixir trades when you're using that freeze spell so make sure that you're freezing at least four troop worth of elixir is another way to put it now before I get too far ahead of myself there is an exception to this rule and that is if you're at the end of a match or if it's a really tight match and you just need to get the tower down it's very low on HP or you just need to make that really aggressive move to tilt things in your favor then of course you can in some circumstances like that go ahead and use your free spell in those circumstances but more often than not this deck is all about trying to maintain that positive elixir advantage over your opponent so that's why you're going to pump as often as possible 
you're only going to use freeze when you can get a lot of value out of it, and you're going to make sure you defend properly. So let's talk a little bit about the Barbarians, because the Barbarians can actually be used offensively too. What Bright Light said is, because Poison is so OP in the game right now, and almost everybody plays Poison nowadays, you just go into every match now, assuming your opponent has Poison. So what you want to do is assume they have the Poison spell, and don't play your Barbarians offensively unless your opponent has been baited out of their Poison. So as with any uh, deck, whether you're trying to bait out Arrows or bait out Zap or whatever you're trying to do, consider Poison a baitable spell as well. Make sure you think of it in the same way that you would think of, say, Arrows or Zap if you're running like a Goblin Barrel Miner deck or something like that. So bait the poison out and then use the barbarians offensively if you have to. You can see there, Bright Light definitely not opposed to using the freeze spell defensively too. He has the cannon also shooting into the oncoming troops, doing a really effective job of killing them all while they're frozen. So uh, before we leave the subject of poison behind, I do want to make another note or two about the spell. So we already said that Bright Light just assumes going into every match that his opponent is playing a poison card. So that's very important, especially in the beginning of the match, but of course all throughout the match, that you have your placement of your cards correct. It's absolutely imperative that you place your archers and your knight in the proper positions to avoid the poison spell. So you want to place your archers on the opposite side of the cannon to defend uh, against incoming troops, and you want to make sure that you have place your knight, you save your knight, and you don't put your knight on the incoming tanks in the lane, so if there's a giant hypothetically coming at you in the lane, or in this case a bowler, you want to make sure that you place your knight last right near the bridge onto the range units that are trailing the tank instead of right on the tank. Now that might seem pretty obvious to some of you guys, but you'd be surprised at how many players I see for whatever reason placing their, their tanky unit on the opponent's tanky unit, and that's not what you want to try to do. You want to use your tanky unit, whether it be a Valkyrie in a Trifecta deck or a knight in a deck like this. You want to make sure you use them near the bridge on the range units. They can take a few hits there, so don't be afraid to use your knight defensively on the bridge, and of course, don't be afraid to use your uh, your free spell defensively as you saw Bright Light doing. So now, guys, we're gonna change decks. This is Bright Light's tournament deck, the one that he prefers using in victory challenges and in tournaments. I figured we'd switch things up a little bit and highlight two of his decks. He really loves both of these, so this one's another classic. This time, we're playing the Giant, and we're playing the Giant Poison deck. Surprise, surprise. This one has has the, uh, the mini pack, a pretty standard composition here. You can see Ice Spirit already, and we're going to talk about all the strategy keys that Bright Light suggests using a deck like this as well. Coincidentally, this deck has the Mega Minions, and you guys know if you saw my last video that I love Mega Minions. I think that Mega Minions are going to be a very underrated card until people get a firm grasp on how to play them correctly. Uh, they're, they're very, very good defensively, and they're pretty good uh, de uh, offensively, excuse me, if you can get them behind a tank, it's very difficult to take down a giant mega minion combo, and of course it only costs the attacker 8 elixir, that's a pretty good deal considering the DPS that that uh, mega minion can dole out from the air, which is another advantage obviously. So just be careful when you make sure it's protected well, but it can have great synergy with other cards in a deck like this. And again, you can see the fundamentals are absolutely on point here for Bright Light, following the golden rule here, pump early and pump often. You can see the opponent there decided to use the poison on the king tower, waking it up and activating it. Not sure I would do that with uh, so much health on both of the supporting towers, but hey, that's what he did. So hey, whatever floats his boat, I guess. So uh, Bright Light actually gave me a plethora of do's and do nots for this deck as well. Uh, in case you missed it, my, my video yesterday actually had a very, very similar deck. So if you want more information about one of these big beatdown decks where you build up that big, big elixir advantage and then you unload and really commit to these really strong pushes, go ahead and check out my video yesterday as well. But let's get to Bright Light's tip using this deck. So the number one thing he said in terms of something that he sees people do incorrectly often using any giant beatdown deck is you never, never, never want to play your giant and then play an Elixir Collector. So some of you might be already saying, uh, why would anybody play the giant and then play an Elixir Collector? Well, it's kind of a human tendency sometimes where you 
you play your giant and then you might have say guards and a mini P.E.K.K.A. and elixir and poison in your hand at that point and you have no slow moving troops so a lot of people might just be apt to play the elixir collector after the giant and then play the speedier troops afterwards but that's actually a big no-no according to bright light what you want to do is if you play that giant you want to commit to the push by any means necessary so you don't want to expend any elixir after you place that giant on adding an elixir pump to your current push so that's really important let me go ahead and try to re-articulate that because it sounded kind of i don't know scrambled when i said it the first time so golden rule number one don't play the elixir collector after you play the giant play the elixir collector before the giant or don't play it at all so let's cover a couple more do nots so another big one he said is when you see your opponent dropping a heavy tank coming in your direction you don't want to play your mini P.E.K.K.A. which is obviously your biggest weapon against those big HP tanks you don't want to play your mini P.E.K.K.A. until the tank crosses the bridge very very important because of course if you let your mini P.E.K.K.A. Uh, engage the tank on the bridge or on the opponent side of the arena then you're li you're leave yourself very very open to the opponent playing guards and just shutting down that mini P.E.K.K.A. or goblins or whatever they have so be very careful on your mini P.E.K.K.A. placement the next thing he said is obviously you don't want to misuse the poison spell he sees a lot of people using these big beatdown decks misusing the poison treat the poison both offensively and defensively as if it's a baitable spell we talked about this during the uh, during the first deck of this episode but it's important for this deck as well so be very careful that you don't fall prey to your opponent baiting out your poison spell as well poison is definitely very powerful and you want to make sure you use it as a tool in your arsenal where you can actually get value out of it you can use it defensively to slow down the troops and buy you more time but just be very careful that you don't use it you know against a tower and an elixir pump all by itself itself because that would be considered a bait so make sure you use it at the proper times and in contrast if your opponent has poison and you're able to bait it out of them and you know they don't have it up or they don't have the elixir to use it right now make sure you make them pay that's what this deck is all about so if your opponent uses their poison obviously the number one thing you should be putting behind your giant is the guards the guards melt by poison the guards definitely one of the best epics in the entire game and poison also is is one of the best epics in the entire game so make sure you use your guards immediately and your ice spirit right behind that giant because those are your low hp troops that can really make a dramatic impact so check this out right now bright light is doing exactly what i just talked about now it's not going to really work out for him this time but that's the idea you can, he knows that his opponent doesn't have the poison up so he's going to go ahead and put the guards right behind that giant there so of course the inferno tower still able to target that giant right before those guards but that's the idea anyway behind that principle so other than that guys these beatdown decks they all have the same basic philosophy you pump up you pump up you pump up as soon as you build that elixir advantage then you go hard against your opponent you commit to the push now you it's not just enough to pump early and often you also have to protect your pump so make sure you use the mega minion use the ice spirit use the mini pekka use the guards use whatever it takes i mean you invested five elixir to put the pump down make sure you get that five elixir at least back from the pump so remember whatever troop you put down to protect your elixir collector eventually your opponent is going to have to counter as well so it's not like you're totally losing whatever troops you might put down to protect it now I know some of you are probably going to comment about the emote usage here by bright light he's uh he's definitely a snarky emote user at times now I should say that some of them are in retaliation and other than that I did actually ask him I said hey man you you do use emotes in some sort of a uh, a cocky way at times what's the philosophy behind that and he said hey man you know first of all really nice guy I, I gotta tell you he was incredibly professional friendly and nice to me didn't seem like a jerk in any way shape or form uh, oh look at this people are requesting into our little clan here top player tips they must have seen him on the leaderboard but anyway guys uh, yeah he said that it's all for gamesmanship he said he tries to get in his opponent head by throw not be 
DMing, not spamming them with emotes, but just throwing an oops out there every so often. So I know there might be a few people out there who aren't a big fan of that, but hey, at least he was honest and kind of fessed up, and uh, hey, it is what it is. So I at least asked him about it. And uh, speaking of him being a nice guy, though, he does have a Twitter account, and he said he'd be more than happy to engage with any of you guys to answer any specific questions you guys might have about either of the decks that he shared. Uh, even if you need substitutions or any help like that, he said go ahead and hit him up on Twitter. He'll answer every tweet that comes his way. So his Twitter handle is at brightlightcr with no spaces. Again, it's at brightlightcr. I'll, of course, include it in the description below as well. Also wanted to mention the very first deck that he uh, that we shared in today's video that, that got him to number one in the uh, overall leaderboard that he's been playing for a while now was originally created by his uh, old clanmate, Oregon Beaver, so we wanted to make sure I included a shout-out to him, so consider it done. And that is going to do it for today's video, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in and special thanks again to bright light for doing this and being so generous again with his time and his tips so guys subscribe stay tuned for more top player information and tips and strategy guides and until then guys take care